Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we are going to erect the My Antennas N-Fed Half Wave Antenna that covers 80 through 10 meters, and it meets all expectations. Uh, we're going to just show how to unroll, put the thing up, and I'll show you some uh, results in terms of SWR. And I'm going to tell you right at the beginning, I'm very pleased with the results so far. In a future video, we'll cover uh, actual conversations on the air and, and some comparisons with other antennas. Right now, this antenna looks very promising. So let's dive into the uh, construction, putting the thing together, and getting it up in the air. The antenna comes packaged this way. There's the box that has the ballon in it and the coax connection and a little vent over here and uh, this is a place you can connect a counterpoise or a ground which I did not do. This one right here actually connects the antenna and you see the wire going up over there. Now note that this thing is coiled up very carefully and there's one, two, three bands that you need to cut in order to unroll this. Let's take a quick look at the owner's manual. In the owner's manual, it claims of course to be the perfect antenna for everything, um, it talks about different installations are possible, but then the one it describes is an inverted V. Now it says measured visoirs are taken with the antenna in an inverted V shape with the center of the wire at 20 feet elevation and ends a few feet above the earth. Your values could vary, of course. They don't show this being grounded over here, but it should be. This right here is what's called a sloper. Uh, you've got a high point and then the end is at a low point. We're going to put ours up in an inverted V. It says make sure that the wire is at least 20 feet above the ground. Well, you know, this works really well for me because I use the mechanism of two chain link fence top rail uh, steel pieces put together to make a 20 foot pole. And that's what we did here. They say there's extra feet of wire is left on the end insulator of the antenna for fine tuning if needed. As it turns out, I did take a couple feet off. Okay, if it's too low, you can move it up. Now, the grounding, it says, grounding at the lug next to the SO239 connector is recommended. Um, now, the transformer box, I installed just as high as I could push it up the uh, mast while I was on the ground. So it's only about maybe seven feet high. And then it goes up to an inverted V center point at about 20 feet and then down to a tree over in the other side about, uh, oh, maybe eight or nine feet above the ground. I wanted it high enough so that somebody could walk underneath it without hitting it. I did notice here that they wanted to avoid any tempering with the tuned circuit inside. Tempering is the process of hardening steel. What they mean here is tampering with the tuned circuit inside, you know. Uh, my reaction to that is I own it, it's mine, I ought to be able to do what I want, but I can understand where they're coming from because their reputation is on the line. Now they talk about a power rating of one kilowatt, and then they say that's intermittent commercial and amateur service. Well, what they're saying when they mean intermittent uh, is a single sideband where the uh, power level is fairly low. So. Uh, don't use this for uh, a lot of FT8 at higher powers. Um, use this, you know, throttle your rig back to uh, 25 watts or something like that. And, and just make sure that you, the, the problem here is overheating the ballon in the box. And then it's got the usual caveat, Visoir might vary with above ground height. Uh, type soil, etc., etc., and I put down here, remember, rule number one of antennas, everything affects everything. Now, I want to talk about unrolling the antenna. Be very careful to unroll the antenna wire. Lay the wire out on the ground and then raise it up where it needs to be. Um, now, note in this video how I'm unrolling this coax cable. This is the same way that you should unroll the antenna. This will avoid kinking 
and kink ink can weaken the wire. So uh, unroll it very carefully so it rolls out in a straight line behind you, not all coiled up. This is what the box looks like attached to a pole. This right here is the coax coming in here. Uh, my experimental antenna port is my lightning arrestor number one. And um, this piece of coax is 50 feet long and I attach it to whatever antenna I'm testing. Uh, this right here is for connection to ground. Um, they even provide a little solder lug you can use here if you want to. Or for a counterpoise, I did not uh, use it, did not find a need to use it. Note that this needs to be ni nice and tight here and it comes up over here and then goes off to where you want it. This is another picture showing how these bolts work. They just barely fit around this pole. If you use a... Um, chain link fence top rail as a mast uh, this will fit on uh, a lot easier okay and this is what it looks like going up to the center point the center point is right next to the house and the house is up higher it's on a little bit of a rise so this relative to this is more than 20 feet this is the little coil that is shown uh, in the uh, initial picture, it's a little coil that helps uh, settle everything out and get the visoire in the right place for the right bands. So this is in an inverted V configuration, as you can see here. Another view of the inverted V, I just leaned this top rail, uh, two pieces, up against the house, and then there's a screw there to hold it in place. So this will hold just fine for what's going on. This is my weather station. This is my MFJ receive only loop down here. I didn't have a pulley at hand, so I used uh, just a little short piece of rope at the very top uh, so that I could slip the, uh, actually I think what I did was I uh, put the pole down with the wire already rolled out. I wrapped the rope around here, put this uh, hose clamp up here and clamped it up there to hold this in place. And this will do just fine for testing. Uh, here's a look uh, from the tree end, looking at it going up to the uh, uh, vertex of the inverted V, the apex of the inverted V. And uh, here is a picture of the end insulator, uh, which it comes with. And it's attached to this. Now, they say to cut uh, wire off, but I took the wire, put it through the hole here, wrapped it back on itself here. Uh, I needed to do two feet, and that brought everything into where I want it. Now, let's look at some uh, quick test results on this. 80 meters, the picture on the left is always as is. The picture on the right is when it's two feet shorter. Note that 80 meters is designed for the low end of the band. Now, down here at the low end of the band, you can do digital. You can do things like FT8 and so on. Also, CW is down in this region of the band. This up here, a 5 to 1 SWR, is rather high to deal with, so the antenna does not cover, nor does it pretend to cover, all of 80 meters. It just covers the low end right here. You can try moving it this way, but if you do, you'll end up moving all the bands out. Remember, there's only one adjustment, and that's the length, and you can adjust the other bands just right on uh, away from where they should be. Here's 40. It's under 3 to 1 uh, before modification, but it's at under 2.5 to 1 uh, after my little mod. You can see I could have moved it a little bit more this way. The reason I didn't is because on the higher bands it does move quite a bit that way. Now this is under 3 to 1, meaning across the entire band my little Icon uh, 7300 will uh, tune it using the internal tuner across the entire band, which is just fine. That's what the internal tuner is for. Same thing with 30 meters. Uh, the change in uh, uh, the two feet didn't really make much difference in what's going on here. If anything, it raised the SWR a little bit. Um, so if it is under 3 to 1, so you can use that antenna tuner in your radio. 
20 meters uh, did a nice improvement. It's under 2 to 1 across the entire band. Um, and 17 meters under 2 to 1 across the entire band with my slight adjustment. And 15 meters um, when I made the adjustment. You can see how a little adjustment down at the bottom of the thing makes a big difference on the higher bands. It's under 2 to 1 across the band, so no issue there. Um, on 12 meters, it was under 1.5 to 1 across the band. It is still under 1.5 to 1 across the band. Works just fine. On 10 meters, uh, you want it to have the dip down low. And this is at 28.29, which uh, could move up a little bit. This is 28.69. Uh, it's under 2 to 1 in the part of the band that is used, which is this part right in here. Uh, this stuff up here is just for FM, but note it is under 3 to 1 across the entire band. So what do I think so far? Well, I'm impressed. Uh, if you use your tuner in your radio, and most modern radios have built-in tuners that will tune up to 3 to 1 uh, SWR, you can use this antenna on all bands from uh, 30, 40, uh, 20, uh, t uh, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Now, you won't be able to go across the entire band on 10 meters, but you can uh, cover the good part, the part where most people hang out. And on 80 meters, it will cover the lower CW portion of the band, which is good for digital. This is not an antenna that you can use easily across the entire 80 meter band unless you have a broadband tuner. Now, the antenna can be shortened to move its uh, frequencies up, but remember, you've got one adjustment, and it adjusts everything. So I took two feet off the end and uh, moved everything around a little bit that I still found satisfactory. You could try taking a little bit more. Notice I used the method of folding the antenna back on itself so it didn't actually cut anything. I talked about that in a previous Ask Dave video. So I'm pretty excited about the results. Uh, I did not expect it to cover all of the 80 meter band and it does not. You, you could try a wide range antenna tuner, uh, but you might be better off with a separate antenna for 75 meters, which is the phone portion of the 80 meter band. So in an upcoming video, we'll, uh, I'll give you some over the air experiences and uh, we'll compare it to other antennas and so on. Uh, at the moment I'm very encouraged, looks like a really nifty antenna. I point out that I purchased this antenna with channel funds, meaning you are the ones who made sure I had the funding available to purchase this antenna. This antenna I reviewed at popular request. A lot of people have been asking me to take a look at this antenna. And if you will go to decastlercom support, you'll find the different ways that you can provide support to this channel, meaning provide input to the channel funds so that uh, I can go ahead and do things like this. So uh, next time, Oh, we've got a whole bunch of things to cover here. <laughs> so I'm just going to say uh, for right now, see you next time, 73.